And let's celebrate our mom until she sits. Gets to her seat. Hallelujah, hallelujah. She's not yet there yet. Amen. And now let's lift our hands above our heads and give the Lord the highest worship in this place. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord. We honor you, King of Kings. We thank you because of who you are. We thank you because of your presence in this place, oh God. We worship and adore you, King in glory. Father, our hearts are open today. Minister to each and every one of us, to the glory and to the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I want to give my sister a chance to tell us her name. <laughs> Naitwa Faith Wamboy Karioki Mpenda Bwana. Amadio in this church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's have our seats. Tukaweza kukaa. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and give them a high five on my behalf. Tell them it's great to see you in this place. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. My name is Millicent Adiambo Kaunda. Anaitua Mchungaji Millicent vile amesema. And I'm born again. Ameokoka. And uh, I am married. Ameolewa. To one husband. Kwa ame moja. Pastor Kaunda. Mchungaji Kaunda. And I have two children. Na wakona watoto wawili. A 21 year old young man, very handsome. Mmoja kuna miaka ishini na moja kijana mnaridadi sana. And a very cute young lady called Joy Neema. Na mstana mrebo sana na itua Joy. And Joy is somewhere around there. If she could just stand and wave in this place. Joy, ukaweza kusimama kutungia watu mikono. You can testify with me, she is cute, isn't it? Unaweza toa ushuda ni mrembo kabisa. Amen. I want us to read in scripture Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28 Genesis chapter 1 is a chapter we call the creation chapter I don't know whether there's someone at the projection Thank you. From verse 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, yeah. okay. over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Sema male and female. Sema mwana ume na mwana ume. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then I'd like us to read Psalms chapter 139 from verse 14. Psalms 139 from verse 14. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that fully well. Verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Our topic today is standing out. And that's why we've had to go back to creation. The Bible says that God spoke things into being from chapter 1, verse 1 up to 25. He spoke things into being. 
uh, sura ya kwanza mpaka sura ya 25 Mungu alinena mambo ya, na yakawa but when he, it came to a time of creating man he did not speak him into existence lakini wakati wa kuumba binadamu hakuita ama hakunena but instead he says let us make man in our own image lakini badala akasema wacha tukaumbe Mungu mtu kulingana na mfano wetu sisi wenyewe and in the image of god he created male and female na katika mfano wa Mungu akaumba mme na mke meaning there is no one who is inferior to the other ah uh, kusema kwamba hakuna yule ambayo ako duni kwa yule mwingine all of them were created by god wale wote waliumbwa na Mungu and today our topic is standing out na mada yetu leo ni kusimama each and every one of us seated in this room today kila mtu ambaye amekaa katika huu kumbi was created to so high aliumba dio akaweza kupaa juu there was nobody who was created to crawl on the ground hakuna mtu aliumba dio akaweza kutambaa kule sakafuni and that's the reason why after god created man ndio sababu mungu alipoumba ulimwengu he gives them his first mandate aliwapea jukumu lao la kwanza and he tells them to be fruitful to multiply to have dominion to subdue to replenish akaambia wakaweze kuzama mazao na wakaweze kuwa na mamlaka na wakaweze hata ku kuisha ama kuzaa tena it's because he knew inside of this man that he had created he put potential kwa sababu alijua kwamba ndani ya huyo binadamu ambaye aliumba kulikuwa na uweza this potential was going to enable them to have dominion huo uwezo ulikuwa ungewawezesha kuwa na mamlaka this potential was going to enable them to live extraordinary lives uwezo ulikuwa uwawezeshe kuishi maisha ya ajabu and so when he created adam and eve wakati aliumba adamu na hawa He did not create average people. Hakuumba watu wa kawaida tu. But he created people who had the ability to sow. Aliwa aliumba watu ambao walikuwa na nguvu za kupaa juu. He created people who had the ability uh, to have great potential. Aliumba watu ambao walikuwa na uwezo wa kutenda makuu. And no wonder the Bible says that Adam was given a task of naming about 1.25 million animals na, and he named them and he could remember the names. Na ndipo sasa Adam alipewa jukumu la ku jina um, wanyama uh, zaidi ya milioni moja nukta mbili na akaweza kukumbuka na kuwapea majina hawa wanyama wote he had never seen them again but they were made to pass before him and each one of them was given a name by adam and the bible says that the name that adam called, called them is what they became hakuwa ameona tena hawa wanyama lakini walipopita mbele yake aliwapea majina na lile, lile jina ambao aliwapea ndio likakuwa ndio limekubali this was because there was potential inside of them. Ni kwa sababu ndani yake kulikuwa na uwezo. And this is the same potential that is inside of you and inside of me today. Na huo ndio uwezo ambao uko ndani yako na nami. Irrespective of your race. Bila kujalisha, kujalisha wewe ni wa uzao wa aina gani. Irrespective of your tribe. Kama ukubla kujalisha kabila lako. There is potential inside every lady here and every uh, every gentleman in this place. Kuna uwezo ndani ya kila dana na kila kijana ambaye yako huko. And you know I was just reading there's a book called The Strategy of the Jewish Mother. Da kuna kitabu nilikuwa nasoma ambacho kinaitwa ile mpangilio wa yule mama waki waki ya Kiyahudi when a Jewish mother raises her children wakati Mwayahudi mama Mwayahudi analea mtoto wake he does not provide them with a time to give excuses hapatiani muda wa kupatiana biji sababu because he knows that every child that comes forth from her womb is created with potential kwa sababu anajua kila mtoto ambaye anatoka kutoka tumbo lake ako na uwezo and so he ra- she raises them in such a manner na kwa hivyo anawalea kwa njia hii that when they get into the world wakati watafika katika dunia they are outstanding wataweza kusimama na kuwa wa and they are different na wako tofauti they are individuals wako watu binafsi they are people who do not just agree with stuff because everyone else agrees with it si watu wakukubaliana na vitu kwa sababu kila mtu mmoja yote yule anafanya yake because of the upbringing kwa sababu ya ule ulezi ambao wamepata they are raised to believe that in class they are the best wanalelewa kujua ya kwamba katika darasa wao ndio washindi ama wao ndio wako mbele they are raised to believe that in workplaces they'll be the best wana kwa kuamini kwamba hata kazini upana napofanya kazi 
And so there is no excuse for whatsoever that they can give for not being best. Hakuna sababu ama kisababu anaweza toa kwa kukosa kuwa mbele ama mashujana hodari. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. They believe they can do all things. Wanaamini kwamba wanaweza fanya mambo yote. And they do not try to be someone else. Na hawajaribu kuwa mtu mwingine yeyote. They are authentic. Ni watu wa ukweli. Because that's what their mothers have taught them to believe. Kwa sababu ni vile mama ya, mama zao wamewalea kuwa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Now we have been raised in a culture sisi tumelelewa katika uh, utamaduni na where being extraordinary is not really the norm. Uh, ya kuwa ukiwa wa kipekee si kitu ambacho kimekubalika sana. Like when we were growing up. Wakati tulikuwa tunakuwa in my community. Kama ka, ka, katika kabila langu. Girls are supposed to be found in the kitchen and that all. Wanasta, wasema wanastahili kupatikana pale jikoni. And so if by chance you have an education and you're privileged to have one like me. Uh, kama umepata masomo na umekuwa umekuwa na masomo kama yeye. Even the young men start looking at you and they don't really trust you much. Hata vijana wanakuangalia na wakuamini kabisa. They start wondering whether you can really make a good wife Wana, because you've gone to school. Wanajiuliza kweli unaweza tengeneza, unaweza kuwa bibi mzuri. That was in the olden days. Hizo ndio siku za kale. We have also been raised in a culture sisi tumelelewa katika utamaduni where we believe ladies are always in front of the mirror. Tunaamini kwamba wasichana ama wadanda wanakuanga mbele ya kila makeup lipstick and all those pounds and everything in our faces pondoza, and that is all that matters to the ladies in in our generation na hiyo ndio inajalisha kuwa ukiwa msichana ama mdada such that if you open the handbag of a lady you will find a mirror and a lipstick na inasemekana kwamba ukifungua mkopo wa msichana ama mdada utapata ile lipstick ama vipi pondozi but there is nothing else that they can excel in kwa sababu ati hakuna kitu kingine wanaweza kuwa Uh, because of the simple fact that they are ladies kwa sababu tu wao ni wadada today i want to bring it to us that god did not create an average person leo nataka kuambieni ya kwamba mungu hakuumba mtu wa created a person that he wants to excel mungu aliumba mtu ambaye anataka awe mjasiri na hodari because when he created you there was a purpose for which you were created alipokuumba kuna jukumu na kusudi ambalo alikuumba juu yake and the purpose for which you were created is not the same purpose for which i was created na jukumu ambalo uliumba juu yake sio lile ambalo niliumba juu yake bwana yesu asifiwe amen a few years ago miaka kadhaa imepita i i wanted to go back to school nilikuwa nataka kurudi shuleni and so uh, in college when you're going you're supposed to give out some of these uh, forms to be filled by referees ah unaporudi kule shuleni ama kule chuo kuna zile form ambazo unastahili kujaza ndio ukaweza kujaziwa na mtu ambaye anakujua and so one of the referees filled na mtu mmoja ambaye ana ni referee akajaza filled that this is an average student akajaza ya kwamba huyu ni mtu tu wa kawaida and i happened to see it before it went na nikaona kabla haijaenda time was running up so i wouldn't have gotten somebody else ah wakati ulikuwa unayoma na deposit singapata mtu because deep inside me i knew i'm not average kwa sababu ndani yangu nilijua ya kwamba mimi si wa kawaida i started wondering what did they consider when they were writing average yet they were never with me in class ah kauliza ni nini aliona ikiwa tu ya kawaida na hakuwa na mimi katika darasa and so i took the forms to college nikachukua zile form and when i went in for the first semester nilipoenda katika ile semester ya kwanza deep inside of me i was stirred up ndani yangu nikakorogeka and i knew i have to prove the point even to the lecturers that i'm not an average student mimi nikaona ni lazima ningewaonyesha hata wahadhiri ya kwamba mimi so the first si units that i took ile course ya kwanza nilipochukua i ensured i had to get straight a's nikahakikisha kwamba ni lazima ningepata alama because i am not average kwa sababu mimi si mtu wa kawaida bwana yesu asifiwe amen why was i fighting average kwa nini nilikuwa napigana na ile jina kawaida because average is never celebrated kwa sababu mtu wa kawaida tu hasherekewi you don't pay for a ticket to go to or listen to an average speaker huwezi kulipa tikiti ukaweza kusikiliza mnenaji tu wa you will be told pay 10000 so that we can go to safari park to listen to an average speaker ukaweza kulipa 10000 uende pale safari park kusikiliza mnenaji tu wa kawaida no Haiwezi we don't also go to the restaurant and ask the waiters to give us average food. Hatuendagi kwa hoteli tukautisha tukaitisha chakula tu cha kawaida. We always pay for the best. Tunalipia zile chakula ambazo ni And God desires for you and I to 
be the best. Not to be an average person. To exploit your full potential. So that you don't deny the world the best of you. And many times we are average because we want to compare ourselves with others. We want to fit into the society. If you're a young person, you want to fit into the rest or the rest of the people in the society. Like the skit we were watching here. <laughs> we want to fit in because every other young person is going to the movie. Church is boring. No, we have not been called to fit in. We have not been called to compare ourselves with anyone. But we have been called to be authentic. Because you are the best competitive advantage you have. Amen. Each one of us has been designed to change the world in a particular way. A story is told in the book of Matthew chapter 14. From verse 21 to 29. When you read the previous uh, verses, Jesus has just fed a multitude with fish and bread. And then, and then he releases the, the disciples to go into the boat and cross the lake. And he went to a place to pray. And at the time when the night, it was the Bible says that in the fourth watch of the night, that is 4 a.m. Katika sakumi ya usiku, they saw someone walk in the on the water. Wakaona mtu akitembe katika ma kwenye maji. And they were afraid. Na wakau ujazo na hofu na woga. They were wondering who is this. Wakauliza huyu ni nani? It must be a ghost. Wakasema pengine huyu ni ghost. But as soon as Jesus spoke, lakini wakatumbu netu Yesu aliponena. Peter spoke up and said, If it is you, Master, let me come and walk upon that water also. Petera kasema kama ni wewe bwana. Wacha mimi ya mimi ni kaweza kutembe. And Jesus said, Come. And as soon as Jesus said, Come, Peter left the boat and started walking on water. Amen. You know, I want to believe that before Peter could leave that boat, there were all discouragements that were coming for the rest of the disciples. Maybe the disciples were saying, Have you ever seen anybody in Galilee walking upon water? You are a fisherman. Is this realistic? Some were saying, You like being seen. But you know what? Peter did not care about what the people in the boat said. He didn't even care that these were fellow disciples. And there are times when you, my sister, as young or as old as you are, you will want to step out and stand out, but there will be voices that will be discouraging you from becoming. It is time for you to close your ears. Because only you what knows what God has told you to do. Only you knows what the best of you looks like. And what we are saying today is that we are not going to settle for less. Peter did not care what the disciples were saying. All that he could remember in his mind is that Jesus has said, come. And so he stepped out and was, was walking on the word, come. 
nje na akaweza kutembea kwa juya lile neno jo he could hear the discouragement but he could also hear the word come alikuwa anasikia ile maneno ya kuvunja moyo lakini alikuwa anakumbuka lile neno jo i don't know what the lord has created you for sijui mungu amekuumba ukawe mtu aina gani i only know what he has created me for mimi najua tu vile ameniumba nikawe but all he is saying is can you stand out my daughter anakuambia tu wewe mtoto wangu binti yangu i want you to be different nataka uwe mtu wa kawaida wa kipekee i have called you to be the best in this area mimi nimekuita ukawe yule hodari sana katika hiyo ukumbi and so step out of your comfort zone ukaweza kutoka kutoka starehe zako and become na ukaweza kuwa bwana yesu asifiwe many people will tell you that this thing that you're talking about is not realistic watu wengi watakwambia hii mambo hii mambo unasema juu yake haiwezekani but you are saying you'll be a minister in the nations unaweza kusema utakuwa waziri katika taifa hili you will be preaching to the nations utakuwa unahubiri katika kwa mataifa it doesn't make sense haiwezi kawe ayelewe has anybody from your village ever gotten into an aeroplane kuna mtu kutoka kijiji chako ameshawaingia kwa ndege but if the lord has said come lakini kama mungu amesema njo then it will surely come to pass itaweza kutimia bwana yesu asifiwe amen i don't know what your village is called sijui kijiji chako kinaitwaje but my village is very small lakini kijiji changu ni kidogo sana like yesterday i was taking the huduma number and they were struggling to know what village that is mimi nilikuwa nachukua ile namba ya huduma walikuwa naji wanashughulika sana because it's not clearly known kwa sababu hiki kijiji hata kijulikani so maybe you as is also not clearly known na pengine hata kijiji chako hakijulikani maybe your father never even got to class 4 hata pengine baba yako hakufika darasa la 4 same to your mother na pengine mama yako but if jesus has said you are going to visit the nations lakini kama mungu amesema utaenda kwenye mataifa yes hiyo itatimia if he has said come kama amesema njo it is time for you to start praising yourself ni lazima ni wakati wako kaweze kujinua it is time for you to start preparing yourself ni wakati wako kuanza kujiandaa ukajiandaa because in this year of open heavens kwa sababu huu katika huu mwaka wa mbingu we are going places tunaenda mahali we are going places tunaenda mahali kwingi bwana yesu asifiwe amen there are people you will need to delete from your life kuna watu ambao utaweza kutoa kwenye orodha ya marafiki the people who do not believe in you watu wale ambao hawakuamini the people who don't celebrate you wale ambao hawakushereke irrespective of where they are hata wakiwa you are going to delete them from your life utaweza kuwa and connect yourself to those who are celebrating you ukajishikamanisha na wale wanakushereke those who are believing in you wale wanakuamini so that you can get to your destiny ndio ukaweza kufika katika hatima yako it doesn't have to look realistic si lazima ionekane kama itawezekana it doesn't have to look practical haiwezi si lazima ionekane kama inawezekana it doesn't have to look logic si si lazima ionekane kama ni ya kweli it might not be logical inawezekana isionekane kama ina inaeleweka because even things that steve jobs jobs talked about were not logical kwa sababu hata ile maneno mtu ambaye anaitwa steve jobs alinena hayakuonekana kama anaweza the first time he said he was going to come up with a computer called apple it was not logical wakati alisema ataweza kutengeneza kompyuta inaitwa apple watu walisema haiwezekani when he dropped out of school because there was this dream that was pushing him it was not realistic wakati aliacha alitoka shule kwa sababu kulikuwa na hili hii doto ndani yake ambayo ilikuwa inamsukuma watu hawakuelewa there were people who did not see like he was doing anything practical kuna watu waliona kwamba hawafanyi kitu chochote ambacho ni cha but he had a dream that was bigger than him lakini alikuwa na ndoto ambayo ilikuwa kubwa kuliko yeye and in this church today na katika kanisa hili leo we have people who have dared to dream a kuna, dream tuko na watu ambao wameota ndoto it is time to stand out ni wakati wao wa kusimama it is time to rise up ni wakati wa kuinuka because it's only when you'll be willing to jump off the edge ni kwa sababu ni wakati tu ambao utaweza ku, 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 kutoka na ukaruka kutoka that you will be able to fulfill your purposes ambapo utaweza kutimiza ndoto zako na kusudi zako bwana yesu asifiwe amen it's until you jump off the edge ni wakati tu utaweza kutoka kutoka that the pembeni that the parachute will open ya kwamba ile <laughs> and you will get flying ile purutangi itaweza kufunguka na ukaweza kupaa bwana yesu asifiwe amen praise the name of the lord amen we have been called 
to, to stand out. Tumeicho tukaweza kusimama kando. And in us standing out we cannot afford to do things in mediocrity. Na tukiwa tukitimesimama kando na ajua hatuwezi kufanya mambo kwa njia tu ya kawaida. Standing out will cause us to do things in excellence. Kusimama kutatufanya tufanye mambo kwa njia ya kipekee. Standing out will cause us to put in extra energy. Ah kusimama kutatubidi sisi tukaweza kuweka bidii zaidi so that we can be able to, to fulfill our purposes. I want us to look at something. What are some of the ways or things that will help us to stand out? Number one, we must be authentic. Do not be uh, do not copy somebody else. You have to be authentic. Be the real you. Look at yourself and sit down and have a me time with you. And start asking yourself. What are some of the things that have been deposited in me, not in my sister, inside of me? Because, because there is none of us who do, whom God did not deposit something inside of them. And after you've known everything that has been deposited in you. Be willing to carry the whole of it without hiding it. When you have an opportunity to negotiate, place the entire of you on the table. There are people who might look at you and think you are only good in being a housewife. You are only good in being a house technician. It is time for you to redefine yourself. And do not allow anybody to define you. The current circumstances do not define who you are. Some people will define you based on the class of education you got to. Watu wengine atakupatia jina kwa sababu kutokana na ile masomo ama kiwango cha masomo ambacho uko nacho. But by being authentic. Lakini kwa ukiwa mtu wa ukweli, you will first define yourself. Wewe mwenyewe utajipatia jina. And then introduce yourself to the people. Na ukaweza if they have been calling you just a house technician or a housewife or a cleaner then you have to define, redefine yourself and then stand before them and introduce the new you introduce the new introduce the new you to the people. And the next time they call you whatever they have been calling you, do not respond. Because it will be the mistaken identity. At because you, you borrowed Unga once upon a time, now you have become Modo wa Madena. No. <laughs> it, it will be a wrong identity. It only happened once. But I am on the road to recovery. I am not going to dwell in this poverty for long. Because I have decided to stand out. I am harnessing myself one more time. The Bible says in the book of Micah, Rejoice not, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall rise again. I fell the other day. And maybe because of that, I'm being called a single mother. From today, henceforth, I am not just a single mother but I am a woman saved by the grace of God I am a child of the most high God Amen. they may define me based on where they found me maybe a few nights ago I was on the streets maybe I was a twilight girl then but I got born again 
wake lakini nilizaliwa tu i am a child of the most high ni mwana wa bwana and so do not call me those things you used to call me niita ile majina ulikuwa unaniita because my identity changed kwa sababu kitambulisho changu kilibadilika i am standing out mimi nasimama bwana yesu asifiwe amen a few years ago i want to talk a testimony about my daughter miki miaka kadhaa imepita nataka kutoa ushuhuda kuhusu she had been sick for a while alikuwa amegonjeka and any time would get into the hospital the doctors and the nurses would say wakati wote ambao tulienda hospitali madaktari na wakubwa uguzi walikuwa wanasema hivi that, that child who is a sickler is here wakati uh, yule mtoto ambaye anakuanga amegonjeka kila wakati yako hapa one time we went to see a certain doctor kaisi wa fula wakati mmoja tukaenda kuona daktari fulani based in aga khan ah uh, pale hospitali ya aga khan and he told me you know what you need to join the people who can support you a support group because all sicklers are joining this group ah uh, kaniambia unaweza kuingia katika kikundi hiki cha watu wale ambao wanakuanga wagonjwa wako na wagonjwa kila wakati i shed tears and i told god nikalia machozi nikaambia mungu i'm not a mother to a sickler mimi si mama wa yule mtoto anagojekanga kila wakati my child was healed at calvary mtoto wangu aliponywa pale calvary you said it is finished ulisema imeisha pale calvary and i turned to dr casey and i told her nikaukia yule daktari nikamwambia it was on the 14th of november 2003 ilikuwa ile tarehe 14 mwezi wa 11 and i told him nikamwambia this girl's name is not a sickler jina la huyo mtoto si mgonjwa she is joy name ana it was join em her name is join em jina lake ni join em so Emma. please be calling her join em wewe ukimuita hilo jina don't be calling her a sickler usikwe unamuita mgonjwa she is not a sickler kwa sababu kila si mgonjwa kila wakati bwana yesu asifiwe amen there are times when you need to redefine yourself kuna wakati ambao una una tahili ukaweza kujitabulisha tena so that people will call you by the name you call yourself ndio watu wakaweza kukuita kwa jina lile ambalo umenipata lipya bwana asifiwe amen there are times when yes you're trying to redefine yourself but circumstances are hard kuna wakati ambapo unataka kujitabulisha tena lakini mazingira yako yakawa ni magumu sana and so people will tell you my sister you have to keep your head down and just be quiet what, what, it is well what, what, watu watakwambia ukaweza kuweka kichwa chako chini iko hivi tu put your head down because the economic times are bad ukaweza kuweka kichwa chako chini kwa sababu hali ya uchumi ni mbaya just put your head down in this job where you are being abused inamisha kichwa chako katika hii hii kazi ambayo unaweza kudhulumiwa because if you leave what will you eat kwa sababu ukitoka hapa kwani utakula nini today i have come to announce leo nataka kukutangazia it is time to raise your head up ni wakati wa kuinua kichwa chako so that there will be a bullet coming you will see it coming ndio kama kunaweza kuwa na ile bullet inafuja and you can duck it ndio ukaweza kuepuka bwana yesu asifiwe amen because when you put your head down kwa sababu ukinamisha kichwa chako you submerge your voice Uta, unaweza kuficha sauti yako and it is only in your voice where there is power na ni sauti yako tu ambayo itakupa nguvu speak out ukaweza kupaza sauti speak out paza sauti ukaseme kitu bwana yesu asifiwe amen speak out panza sauti useme kitu speak out and tell the lord i'm going to dream again nena kitu ukaambia ukaambia mungu na nitaweza kuota tena speak out and tell yourself this brokenness has to come to an end ukaweza kunena kitu useme hii masikini ni lazima itaisha speak out and tell yourself i am walking out of this trouble nena tena na ukaweza kusema mimi natoka katika huu hizi shida because in my hands the lord has put a blessing kwa sababu ndani yangu mungu ameweka baraka after you have spoken out put your hands to work ukiweza kunena sasa ingia katika kazi bwana yesu asifiwe amen speak up aweza uh, kunena paza sauti useme kitu and you must follow your passion mercilessly ni lazima ukaweze kufuata ile ari na shauku ya moyo wako bila kujali miles munro used to say in one of his books miles munro alisema katika mmoja wapo ya kitabu chake that the grave is the richest place ya kwamba kaburi ndio mahali ambapo pako na utajiri mwingi sana the first time i read that i wondered what is he saying niliposoma ile neno nikashindwa hiyo ni kusema nini because in the grave is where all intentions go kwa sababu katika kaburi ndio ma 
mahitaji yoyote na malengo yote yanaingia. I intend to start a business but you don't start it. Mimi ninataka kuanzisha biashara na hutaanzisha. I intend to compose a song but you do not compose. Mimi nataka kutengeneza wimbo na hutengenezi. I intend I intend but you do not end up. Mimi napanga mimi napanga na huwezi fanya. Because intentions will earn you nothing. Kwa sababu matarajio na mipango haitaweza kukupatia chochote. You have to come from a point of intention to a point of action. Ni wakani lazima ukatoke kutoka mahali pa mkupanga ndio ukaweza kutingia mahali pa matendo. That's why I'm saying follow your passion mercilessly. Ndio nasema ya kwamba ukaweza kufuata shauku zako bila kujali. You must be convicted enough to act. Ni lazima ukaweza kuwa na zile shauku mpaka ukaweza kuingia katika matendo. You remember the conviction you had that caused you running to come to the altar to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Ile shauku ulikuwa nayo wakati ulikimbia kwenye madhabahu kuwa kuja kumpokea Yesu. Now you must be convicted enough to act so that you can stand out of your peers. Ni lazima ukaweze kuwa na shauku iko na nguvu hivi kwamba utaweza kusimama kando na marafiki zako. And you remember I said there are people you'll have to delete from your life. Nilisema ni lazima kuna watu utatoa kutoka orodha ya marafiki zako. You know there are times when you've thrown pity parties until the people have gathered to come and attend your party. Kuna wakati umetengeneza mabash na alafu watu wamekuja mara nyingi mara nyingi bash ya kujihurumia bwana asifiwe <laughs> until you have attracted all those people that normally pity themselves so you are a bunch of people who are pitying themselves every day you meet you are pitying yourselves umevutia watu wengi ambao tu ni kikundi cha kujihurumia mkikutana tu ni kujihurumia it is time to tell yourself i do not belong to this pity party ni session anymore nasema mimi si wa kikundi hiki cha kujihurumia and arise ukaweza kuinuka you have to arise ni lazima ukainuke bwana yesu asifiwe Amen. you have to tell yourself or ask yourself these friends that i've been having around me how are they adding value to me ni lazima ukajiuliza hawa marafiki wengi niko nao ni nini manufaa gani wanaleta katika maisha yangu and i'm sorry to announce here today niko na hofu ya kutangaza hapa that some of those friends are even born again ya kwamba hata marafiki wengine wameoka ni watu wameoka but they do not add value na hawaongezi manufaa yoyote katika maisha yako bwana asifiwe you keep meeting and you keep uh, talking and criticizing and doing everything else apart from that which will lift you up. Muna kongea na kunena mambo mengi na kunungunika lakini si mambo ya kujiinua. It is time to arise above. Ni lazima ni wakati wa kuinuka. It is time to stand out so that you can be outstanding. Ni lazima ukaweze kusimama kati ya wengine. And you start assessing yourself and assessing your friends. Ukajaribu kujitathmini na kujiangalia uko And start removing them one after the other ukatoe mmoja baada ya mwingine until you re- remain with only that one who will add value to you paka ubaki na wale tu ambao wataleta manufaa maishani it's also time for you to start asking god to connect you to your destiny connectors ni lazima ukaambia mungu akushikamanishe na wale watu ambao watafikisha kwenye hatima yako as you move out of this people who are not adding value to you kiachana na watu wale ambao waongeze manufaa maishani mwako you are telling yourself god connect me to that person who will help me get into my destiny. Unaambia Mungu akusaidie ukapatane na wale watu ambao watakuingiza kuelekeza katika hatima yako. Help me connect with those people who will add value to me. Ukaweze kunielekeza kwa watu wale ambao wataongeza faida maishani mwangu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Follow your passion mercilessly. Ukaweze kufuata shauku yako bila kujali. Be convicted enough to act. Ukaweze kushauka and it's worth, it's worth noting today ni vizuri kukachilia mkazo that there are times when you'll be inconvenienced as you pursue ni lazima uweze kujua ya kwamba kusimama kutakubidi wakati mwingine mambo haitakuwa mzuri sana haitakuwa starehe sana but as i had another lady say lakini kama niliposikia mama mwingine akisema conviction and convenience don't live in one house ya kwamba kushawishika na kustarehe hazikai nyumba moja one has to quit one ni has to leave ni lazima mmoja wao akaweze kutoka and in our case here today it is convenience that na is na katika living. hali yetu ni lazima zile starehe zikaweze kutoka conviction will cause you to rise up early in the morning so that you can put your hand to work at something kushawishika ni lazima kutakusukuma ukaweza kuamka mapema ndio ukaweza kufanya kazi kwa kazi fulani bwana yesu asifiwe amen so be convicted enough to ukaweza, act ukaweza kushawishika mpaka ukaweza kutenda kutenda 
There are times when you will move out of your comfort comfort zones like I have said. Kuna wakati utaitakubidi ukatoke kwenye starehe zako. As young ladies who are here nowadays it's even affecting old women like me. Ka kama wale mabinti wako hapa wa dada wachanga ambao wako hapa na hata wa mama wazee there are times when you will want to stay with those other girls and you want to dress like them you want to fit in the systems of the world the, the bible tells us in romans chapter 12 that we cannot conform to the patterns of this world standing out will change the way we talk it it will change the way we behave utabadilisha vile tunatenda and it will change the way we dress na itabadilisha pia vile tunavaa bwana yesu asifiwe and i'm not saying you wear the way i do na sijasema ukavae kama vile navaanga unless you like it ah lakini kama ukipenda unaweza vaa vile amevaa yes but decency for a person who is standing out a doi who has chosen to stand out they will also be decent in the way they talk and the way they dress kama when ni dada wa ni lazima utachunga vile unaongea na vile unavaa you have never walked around the streets of zimmerman and found gold being spread out openly and diamond have you ever seen it hakuna wakati umetembea katika mitaa ya zimmerman ukapata dhahabu na fedha zimetandikwa kila mahali that you can pick it at will atutaweza chukua moja baada ya nyingine anything that is precious for a lady who is standing out is hidden kila kitu ambacho ni cha thamani kwa dada ambaye ni wa maana Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Anything that is precious is normally hidden. It is ha- it has to be mined. It has to be dug up before you get to it. Chochote ambacho ni cha thamani ni lazima kinafichwa na ni lazima ukachimbue kama unataka kukipata. And so I want to challenge our young ladies here. Na sasa nataka kupatia changamoto wale wadada wachanga papa. Stand out and be counted. Ukaweze kusimama uhesabiwe. Stand out and you'll be outstanding in even your relationships. Utaweza kukaweza kuwa mpeki pekee hata katika ushirikiano zako na maurafiki zako be different ukaweza kuwa wa tofauti dare to be different ukawe uh, ukawe mtu wa tofauti a few years ago one time after church service miaka kadhaa ambayo nimepita wakati mmoja baada ya ibada outside here near the baptism of pool hapa karibu na kidibu cha ubatizo a young man came i don't know what we were talking about and he came kuna kijana mmoja alikuja na akatupata tukiongea and as we talked he told me something that has never left my mind because i got very irritated aliniambia kitu wakati tulikuwa tunaongea na yeye he told me you know what mom <laughs> akaniambia mama unajua nini unajua huku ndani hii church yetu we don't have uh, marriageable ladies here they can't make wives unajua hapa katika kanisa letu hakuna wasichana wasichana ambao wanaweza oleka and you know it hit me like you know Ilin i asked him konga sana what do you mean we don't have ladies who can make wives here nikamuliza unasemaje kusema hakuna wasichana ambao wanaweza oleka because he was a young man who was almost getting married kwa sababu alikuwa kijana mdogo ambaye alikuwa karibu kuoa age wise kimiaka now he is saying in this church where he belongs there are no marriageable ladies ladies here cannot make wives na nasema katika kanisa hili ambalo yeye ni mmoja wa mmoja wapo anasema hakuna wasichana ambao wanaweza oleka so i asked him what do you mean nikamuuliza unasimaanisha nini akaniambia you see the way they dress unaona vile wanavaa these are only fit to be girlfriends you use and you dump wewe ni marafiki tu wa kisichana unawatumia alafu unawatupa Bwana asifiwe. The ladies who are in this DOI today. Ah uh, wale wadada bao ni wa athari tuko katika DOI leo. We are standing out. Ni lazima tukasimame kama and we are redefining ourselves. Tunaweza tukaweza kujitambulisha inside this church. Kwa sababu ndani ya kanisa hili there will be expensive young ladies. Kutakuwa na wadada ambao ni wa dhamani. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Inside this church. Katika kanisa hili for a young man to find you to marry you. Kindipo dio kijana akaweze kukupata kuoa. They will have to seek the Lord properly ni lazima wakaweze kumtafuta bwana sawa sawa bwana yesu asifiwe amen because we are redefining ourselves in our talk in our relationships in our dressing tunajitambulisha tena katika kuongea kwetu katika kutembea kwetu kuvaa kwetu na kila kitu haleluya 
something else. I don't even, I've even lost count. The next thing is, <laughs> for you to stand out, you must get rid of fear. Kama wewe utasimama kando ni lazima ukaweke uoga kando. Get rid of fear. Ni lazima ukaache uoga. Pastor Geshoye used to define fear. Ah, mtu gani Geshoye? Geshoye alikuwa anatuambia uoga as a false evidence appearing real. Ni ile uh, ushahidi wa wa uongo ukionekana kama ni wa ukweli. We must get rid of fear. Ni lazima tukaondoe uoga because fear kwa sababu uoga is not in the success equation. Ah uh, iko katika ile uh, ile hesabu ya ushind for you to succeed in whatever endeavor you want to get into kama utaweza kushindana katika jambo lolote ambalo unaweza kuingia ndani yake it could be in your career pengine ni talu, katika taluma yako it could be in your christian work pengine ni katika matembezi yako ya kikristo it could be in your business whatever pengine it is pengine ni biashara yako chochote kile you have to jump up and stand out even though you are afraid ni lazima ukasimame hata kama unaogopa you are not going to stick back hutaweza kujizuia pale you will move to the front utaweza kutembea mbele because fear can not bring success. Sababu uoga hauwezi leta ushindi. And many times as Christians you know where we hide when we are afraid. Na kama wakristo wakati mwingi tunajificha wakati tuko na uoga. We hide in prayer. Tunajificha katika maombi. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. I love prayer. Don't mistake me. Mimi nawaambia maombi sana usikose. But we hide in prayer so we keep saying I am still waiting on the Lord. Tunakaa tukisema mimi bado namngojea bwana. When are you going to start that business? I am still waiting on the Lord. Sasa biashara hiyo lini na bado namngojea. When are you going to get to school next? I am still waiting on the Lord. Shule lini mimi na bado nangojea bwana. When are you going to get into this investment? I am still waiting on the Lord. Wewe utawekeza hii pesa lini? bado namgojea bwana bwana yesu asifiwe amen I had one time someone who really corrogated my mind and he said <laughs> even prayer is not in the success equation ah kuna mtu alisema hata maombi haiko katika ile hesabu ya ushindi can i repeat prayer is not in the success equation ah ya kwamba maombi haiko kwa ile hesabu ya what do i mean nasema na maanisha nini when you pray wakati unaomba god gives you revelations mungu anakupa ufunuo now it is how you act on the revelations you have ni vile utatendea kazi kazi zile ufunuo that will give you success ambayo itakupatia ushindi tumeelewana the revelation it is good to pray very important to pray but hear out for revelations lakini ukaweze kusikiliza ukapata ufunuo what is the spirit of god telling you roho wa mungu anakuambia nini anakuambia ukauze ndoma kama amekuambia uza ndoma amka ende utafute ndoma uza Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Do not wait for him ukifikiria ati today because I'm broke and I've fasted for 40 days he will come dropping bags of money in this place. No he will not. Usifikiria kwamba ume, kama umefunga siku 40 Mungu atakuletea uh, mifuko ya ndoma. Listen Hai. out for the revelation he is ukaweze giving you. Ukaweza kusikiliza ukapate ufunuo and act upon it. Na ukaweza kutendeza kazi zile funuo. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Aha. Also to be able to stand out. Kuweza pia kusimama kando na you okay. must deal with offense. Ni lazima ukaweze kushughulikia mambo ya kuudhika. Deal with offense and unforgiveness. Ukaweza kushughulikia mambo ya ku kuudhika na kutosameheana you have to be bigger ni so la... big that you can forgive ni lazima ukawe mkubwa vile hivi kwamba utaweza kusamehe bwana yesu asifiwe amen you know there are people who are brought down instead of them soaring high like i said we were created to fly to soar we are not able to go high why because so and so said something about me kuna watu wanashindwa kupaa kwa sababu mtu fulani alisema kitu kifulani kibaya juu yetu how could they not greet me kwa nini hawakunisalimia kwa nini kwangu hakukuja kuona mtoto na yeye ni pasta bwana asifiwe You know those very petty things that if the disciples would resurrect today they would wonder what is this that is causing you not to spread the gospel yet they were crucified for this gospel zile vitu ndogo ndogo ambazo zinatufanya tusihubiri injili na na wale wanafunzi hata walisulubishwa kwa sababu ya hii injili it is time to be big enough to forgive ni wakati wa kuwa wakubwa hivi kwamba tutaweza kusameheana because when you are standing out you don't fight for your rights 
Kwa sababu ukiwa umesimama huwezi kujipigania haki za God fights on your behalf. Mungu anakupigania ana wewe. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. And when you are standing out then you must be willing to exceed the minimum. Have to go an extra mile. Wakati unasimama ni lazima ukaweza kupitisha kile kipimo, ukaweza kufanya zaidi. If in your workplace you have job descriptions you have been given kama kazini kwenu mmepatiwa maelezo ya kazi ensure you do it all and exceed it ukaweza kutimiza haya yote na kuzidisha that is the only thing that will give you a promotion Hiyo it will ni... cause you to stand out the extra that you have done will cause you to stand out hiyo ya zianda ambayo utafanya ndio utakufanya ukapate kupandishwa cheo bwana yesu asifiwe amen many times we receive people who want prayer so that they can receive promotion next time don't come for prayer Wak- just do an extra in your workplace kuna watu ambao wana mba wanakuja kuombewa ndio wakapate kupandishwa cheo wakati huo mwingine fanya zaidi there is no employer who will ignore you when you're doing extra hakuna mwa, mwa, mtu ambaye ana ajiri watu ambaye atakosa kuku, kukuona kama unafanya zaidi and especially when your motive you're not actually pursuing that promotion but what you are doing if you were supposed to be sweeping only this place you are doing inside here and you also go outside and sweep it really clean Uh, hufanyi kwa sababu ukaweza kupandishwa cheo lakini kama unastahili kufagia hapa unafagia hapa na unaenda unafagia hata pale nje that will cause you to be extraordinary hiyo itakufanya uwe wa kipekee and any employer wants an extraordinary employee na mwajiri wowote anataka mtu ambaye anafanya zaidi never settle keep moving uh, usiweze ku kutulia tu kila wakati ukawe unaendelea never settle never ever submit to the spirit of i have arrived usiweze ku, ku, ku fika mahali ukafikiria kwamba umefika ensure you keep moving uh, hakikisha kwamba kila wakati unaendelea and as i wind up na ninapotamatisha It is you the Lord has spoken to ni wewe ambaye Mungu amekunenea ni wewe amekwambia utaenda kwa mataifa si ndio E, ni wewe amekuambia atakupatia promotion. Ni wewe amekuongelesha sijui amekuambia nini. Please don't carry strangers alone. Usiweze usiweze kubeba marafiki na watu ambao hawakunenewa na Mungu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Don't carry strangers alone. Usibebe watu ambao hawakunenewa. When you look at scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 12. Ukine, ukiangalia uh, katika kitabu cha mwanzo uh, sura ya 12. Genesis chapter 12. Kitabu cha mwanzo uh, 12. Uh, Abraham has been told by God. Alikuwa ameambiwa na Mungu to move and go to a land he'll be shown. Akaambiwa na Mungu akaweza kuondoka akaenda kwenye nchi ambayo Mungu okay. angemuonyesha. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. Na Mungu akamwambia Abraham, toka kwenye nchi yako na ukaende kwenye nchi ambayo nitakuonyesha. I'll make you a great nation. Nitakufanya taifa kuu. I will bless you. Nitakubariki and make your name great. Na nikafanya jina lako likawe kuu you will be a blessing. Na utaweza kuwa baraka. Now let's read Acts chapter 7 verse 24. Tukaweza kusoma matendo ya mitume sura ya saba, mstari wa 21. Which I want us to connect to that. Nataka tukashikanishe hayo maandiko mawili. wind up. Tunapomalizia. Acts chapter 7. Ah uh, matendo ya mitume saba. 24. Ah uh, mstari 24. Mstari wa 24. Mstari wa 2 and he said brethren and fathers listen the god of glory appeared to our father abraham when he was in mesopotamia before he dwelt in aran wapendwa sikizeni mungu wetu alijionyesha kwa baba yetu abraham kabla hajaenda kwa nchi ile inaitwa haran and say to him get out of your country and from your relatives and come to a land that i will show you na akamwambia ondoka kwenye nchi ya watu wenu na ukaje kwa nchi ambayo nitakuonyesha Mm-hmm. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. From there where when his father was dead he moved him to this la- he moved him to this land in which you now dwell. Akatoka kwenye mchi wa Kaldeo akaenda Harani na kutoka na hapo akaishi mpaka akafa na akaweza kutoka 
akaweza kutoka kutoka ile nchi ambayo alikuwa anaishi you know abraham in genesis chapter 11 and chapter 12 abraham is a, a, approached by god and he is told i want to take you you to leave your country and go to a place i will show you katika sura ya 11 na 12 alikuwa na mungu aliambiwa na mungu katoke kwenye nchi yako ukaende kwa nchi ambayo nitakuonyesha so you know the only person he could have carried was sarah his wife na pengine angebeba tu mke wake but he decides to carry the father na akaamua aka, kubeba baba yake and many other people na watu wengine wengi pale and so you know when he carries his father along father becomes the leader instead ah kibeba baba yake baba yake ni lazima atakuwa kiongozi because he, abraham has to submit to him kwa sababu ni lazima akajinyenyekeze mbele ya baba yake and so they are busy walking na wako wanatembea and they get to a place that is called haran wanafika wanafika mahali panaitwa haran and the father is now old na baba yake bado ni mzee sasa ni mzee sana and so because he is old he cannot proceed to the land that abraham was told na kwa sababu ni mzee hawezi enda kwenye nchi ile abraham ameambiwa so he tells abraham let us settle here akaambia abraham wacha tukakae hapa and they settle there na wakaweze kukaa wakaweza until kukaa. the time he died mpaka wakati ule alikuwa so at the end of the day the purposes of god in abraham's life are delayed ah uh, ukaona kwamba makusudi ya mungu juu ya abraham yaliweza kukawiwisha because his own compromise became his leader kwa sababu aliweza Baba yake alikuwa sasa ndiye kiongozi. And you know there are times when God will speak to me and tell me can you go and do 1 2 3 4. Kwa sababu kuna wakati Mungu ataninenea na aniambie enda ukafanye 1 2 3. And you know I'll feel I cannot go and do this alone. Ninaona nitaona ya kwamba mimi siwezi fanya hii mambo peke yangu. So I will go and carry my sister Florence. Nitaweza kuchukua dada yangu Florence. And tell her let us go God has told us to go. Ukamwambie mimi utwende Mungu amesema tukaende. But you know what God did not tell us God told me to go. Uh, Mungu hakuambia wewe na Florence aliniambia mimi ama And so wewe. for you to be able to stand out. Ukawe, ukiweza kama utaweza kusimama. Unless God has told you stand out together with faith. Hata kama Mungu hajakwambia msimama pamoja na mtu fulani. Please arise and do what God is commanding you to. Inuka ukafanya yale Mungu amekwambia ukafanye. Otherwise the purposes of God will be delayed in your life because you've carried baggage that God never told you to carry. Uh, kama si hivyo uh, mipango ya Mungu ndani yako au juu yako ita weza kushelewesho kwa sababu umebeba mizigo mingi na watu wengi and you will find yourself settling for less utajipata umepata ile ambayo si kiwango ile Mungu alikuwa anataka and as we are seated here today na tunapokaa katika kukumbi i don't know what god commanded you to do sijui Mungu alikuwa muru kafanya nini and i don't know where you have settled na hata sijui umetulia mahali gani could it be in your career pengine ni katika taaluma yako he has given you an education amekupa masomo because he intended you to be something after that education kwa sababu alikuwa anataka ukawe kitu fulani baada ya because you want to be comfortable kwa sababu unataka kuwa na starehe you have decided to settle for less umeamua ya kwamba utakaa tu hapo or maybe he has been calling you into the ministry ama pengine amekuwa akikuita katika huduma but because you do not want to leave your comfort zone kwa sababu utaki kuacha starehe zako you have decided you are going to settle umesema utakaa tu pale yet you were meant to go further na pengine na kwa na Mungu alikuwa amepanga utaenda utaenda zaidi ya pale ulipo my prayer today for you ombi lako kwangu is that you will arise ya kwamba ukaweze kuinua you will put off everything that you've been carrying that is delaying you ukaweze kuondoa chochote ambacho kinakuchelewesha so that you can get to the place the lord wanted you to go in the first place ukaweze kufika mahali pale mungu alikuwa amepanga utafika do not compromise usiweze kushika do not compromise usiweze ku You understand? No. Usi compromise. Amen. <laughs> do not compromise. Amen. And do not settle for less. Na usiweze kukubali za chini ya ile ulikuwa umeambiliwa na Mungu. Be willing to take that risk. Ukaweze kuhatarisha hata maisha yako. It looks like it is risky. Utaweze kuingia hata kwenye hatari. But did God say it? Lakini Mungu alisema. If he said it then you are going to walk on his word come. C O M E come. Ni akuhatarisha lakini kama Mungu alisema tembea juu ya lile neno njo. And so as we rise up today. Tunapoinuka leo. I don't know what intimidation or who has been intimidating you. Sijui ni nani ama ni mambo gani yamekuwa yakikudunisha. It is time for you to close your ears and move on. Ni wakati wa kufunga masikio yako ukaweza kuenenda. It is time for you to move on just like Peter decided I am stepping into this water. Ni wakati wako wa kuinuka kama vile Petero aliinuka akakanyanga kwenye maji. And he is the only 
disciple who was recorded to have walked on water. Na yeye tu ndiye mwanafunzi ambaye amenakiliwa kuwahi tembea juu ya maji. You will only make history when you agree with God and do what God commands you. Utaweza kutengeneza historia kama utakubaliana na Mungu na kufanya kulingana na vile Mungu amekuamuru. It's time to assess your friendships and your relationships. Ni wakati wa kutathmini maurafiki zako na ushirikiano zako and see who am I going to remove from my area my space ukaweza kuona ni nani utaondoa kutoka and who must I connect to na ni nani itaweza kujishikamanisha how will I connect to them nitajikamanisha na wao develop a relationship with those people you want to connect to ukaweza kutengeneza ushirikiano na hao watu and ultimately as you walk to them wanting maybe mentorship they will be available for you na wakati utaenenda kwao ukitaka waweze kukukuza watakuwa 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 pamoja na wao Bwana Yesu asifiwe we have to step up Ni lazima tukaweze kuinuka because hearing God is crucial Kwa sababu kusikiza Mungu ni kitu cha maana sana and walking in obedience is crucial Na kusim na kutembea kulingana na kutii Mungu ni we kitu cha maana We have to stand out Ni lazima tukaweze kusimama Hata kama watasema ni wewe ni kimbele pele we stand out Bwana asifiwe stand out It does not matter what they will say you Hai, stand up. Haijalishi watasema nini? Stand above all the people that have been around you those people who have been pulling you down stand out. Ukaweza kusimama kando na watu wale ambao wamekuwa wakikuvuruta chini and simama. And yet you cannot be able to stand out if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Na huwezi ukaweza kusimama kama huna ushirikiano na um, ushirikiano na Mungu. That is the first step of standing out. Hiyo ndio hiyo ndio hatua ya kwanza. Bwana asifiwe. And maybe you're here and you've never ever given your life to Christ. Pengine uko hapa na hujawahi salimisha maisha yako kwa Yesu Kristo. What will give you strength to stand out this nothing? Nini kitakupatia nguvu za kuweza kusimama? As we bow our heads in prayer. Tunapoinamisha nyuso zetu kwa maombi. And you'd want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Na ungetaka kumpokea Yesu Kristo. Or you'd want to rededicate your life to him afresh. Ama ungeweza ungetaka kuleta maisha yako tena kwa Bwana. You can just lift your hand and Una, see it. Unaweza inua mkono wako na tutaiona. Thank you so much my sister. Asante sana. Someone else, someone else. Mtu mwingine. Oh Jesus someone else you want to rededicate your life to Christ you want to stand out Kama unataka kusalimisha maisha yako tena kwa Bwana a lady here Asante sana kuna dada mwingine pale Oh Rikabo Busenta ya Raba We give you praise God You want to join our two sisters Kama wewe unataka kuungana na dada zetu You realize you need to stand out to be outstanding Ni lazima ukaweza kusimama kando Hallelujah we are going to pray with you Tunataka kuomba na wewe. Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Baba katika jina la Yesu. We thank you Lord because you created us to soar. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu ulituumba tukaweze kupaa. You created us to us to be different our Father. Ulituumba tukawe watu wa tofauti. And so Lord we come before you right now. Na wakati huu Bwana tuaja kwako wakati huu. Lord repenting for the times that we have wanted to be photocopies of others our God. Tukitumbu kwa sababu tumekuwa tukitaka kuiga watu wengine sana. And from today henceforth Lord we release our hands into your hand. Wakati kutoka siku ya leo tunajiachilia mikono yetu mikono yako. You may guide us to fulfill our purposes in this generation God. Tukaweze kutuongoza katika kutimiza kusudi zetu katika. Help us to be authentic our Father. Ukatusaidia kuwa watu halisi. Help us oh God to deal with fear. Ukatusaidia kushughulikia mambo ya woga. And help us our Father to take risks. Ukatusaidia kuwa watu wa kuchukua hata hatari that we may be able to fulfill our purposes King in glory. We thank you for our sister God who has desired to fulfill her purposes in her generation. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya dada yetu ambaye ameamua kutimiza makusudi yake katika kizazi. We release her before you King in glory. Tunamwachilia mikononi mwako mfalme wa ajabu. And we pray that God you're going to walk with her. Tunaomba ya kwamba ukaweze kutembea naye. As she rededicates her life to you King of glory. Anaposalimisha maisha yake kwako. Causing her to redefine herself our Father. Akiweza kujitambulisha tena. 
We thank you Jesus. Tunakushukuru Bwana. Lord as we walk out of this place today. Tunapotoka katika kanisa. We pray that you're going to help us to redefine ourselves oh God. Ukatusaidie kutukajitambulisha kivipya. That we will call ourselves the way you call us King of Glory. Tutajiita kwa majina yale ambayo umetuita nayo. We thank you and we worship you. Tunakushukuru na tunakuabudu. Because we pray this in Jesus name. Kwa sababu tunaomba haya katika jina la Yesu. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you.